The whole point is that under a surveillance state, you have very few liberties. Unless they, if they don't want you to have certain, do certain things, then they have ways and means of getting to you, like they did with us or other people. They would find things to use against you, to leverage you or influence you to do the, what they want you to do. You know, if you have nothing, uh, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Well, that's a great quote from Joseph Goebbels, first of all. And secondly, it's totally irrelevant what you think. What you think is totally irrelevant. It means absolutely nothing. The government only considers its view of you. And if you're doing something they don't like, they will come after you, no matter what you think of it. Does the NSA routinely intercept American citizens' emails? No. Does the NSA intercept Americans' cell phone conversations? No. Google searches? No. Text messages? No. Amazon.com orders? No. Bank records? No. I thank you, and this is for you, Director Clapper, again on the surveillance front, and I hope we can do this in just a yes or no answer, because I know Senator Feinstein wants to move on. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not? Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. But to conduct that kind of, of collection in the United States, it would have to go through a court order? and the court would have to authorize it. We are not authorized to do it, nor do we do it. Bill Benny, a legendary NSA mathematician, led development of a revolutionary computer system to collect, isolate, and connect important information, like phone calls and financial transactions. Its code name was ThinThread. My name is Bill Benny. Uh, I work for NSA uh, in the military and as a civilian for uh, a little over 36 years. Uh, and I designed a lot of the, uh, 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 the logic and architecture that they're using to spy on everybody in the world. And when I started doing this and using it against U.S. citizens, I became a whistleblower. Uh, I had other people who were with me as a part of that whistleblowing, there were four other people, including Diane Rourke from the House Intelligence Committee and uh, Tom Drake, Kirk Wiebe, and Ed Lewis, who were also NSA employees. So we were all part of that, and uh, we tried to influence the government internally, and they attacked us for it, and tried to put us in jail, fabricated evidence. Uh, we caught them at it, so they failed. The FBI raided the homes of all the people you've met in this story who filed that confidential complaint with the Defense Department. They came busting in. Uh, I was in the shower at the time, <laughs> and uh, one of them came running up uh, and uh, was pointed a gun at my eyeballs. and pulled me out of the shower, so. He drew a gun on you? Uh, yeah, he had it pointed at my head, yeah. Talk about what a hero and how much courage you've got. I mean, you know how serious people are in this government, what they do worldwide, how corrupt it's gotten at that point. You had the will to march into Congress and to tell them what was going on, the first guy. I mean, that's 10 times bigger than Snowden internally. And to really start this whole internal debate and this avalanche of understanding now, I mean, you were really one of the first people to ring the bell to warn folks that, that the country as we knew it was being dismantled. I went to the terrorist uh, analyst shop, which we had running there for quite some time, and I said, uh, I asked them, uh, in all the work you're doing to analyze uh, the terrorist problem around the world, which sites are the ones that give you information that you find valuable? And so they gave me a list of 18 sites, and so I took those 18 sites and said, okay, these are the, these are the deployment targets for our process in January of 2001. Uh, and it was, uh, we estimated the cost to be about nine and a half million dollars. That's all. Basically, uh, it was working uh, uh, like a year and a half before 9-11 occurred, almost two years before 9-11. And uh, if they'd have deployed it, uh, we would have, uh, we would have, in my view, there would have been no way we wouldn't have stopped 9-11. Because all the data, uh, Tom Drake took the program after they killed it because of, it didn't cost enough money. So, so that meant that they, they had to create another program, which they called Trailblazer. There was, the initial cut at that was $4 billion. And after that, it only grew in terms of money. They kept getting more and more. So the, 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 the whole point was that they, they had a, a whole host of contractors that wanted to feed on all that money. 
And if you, if you took the program we did and deployed it, it would already solve the problem. So the point is that you can't go to Congress asking for money for a problem you've already solved. So they had to kill the solution to say we have a problem so they could justify getting the money. And that's exactly what they did. They know exactly what they're doing. And the reason you can tell that they know is because they're keeping it all secret. If they weren't, if they weren't really trying hard to keep it secret, then they might. Then you might think that they they were delusional and they didn't understand that what they were doing. But when they know that they're doing something wrong, they have to keep it secret. Otherwise, they feel they'll be held accountable for what they do. Why else would they keep all these things secret? Do things in secret with a secret court, keeping their interpretations secret, and making secret interpretations and rules for the for a constitution in secret, in hiding it away from most of Congress and their, and certainly all the public. So if you do that, you're hiding something and you know you're doing that. I put it down to three factors, power, money, and control. That is, if you can have an uninformed electorate and an uninformed Congress, you can manipulate them and control them. And especially if you're pulling in a lot of data about them, you can do that and use it against them to get them, to leverage them to do what you want them to do. A British newspaper dropped a bombshell that the U.S. government has been collecting millions of Americans' phone records without them knowing about it. A lot of people are learning that the uh, scope of these uh, surveillance programs is, is immense. The government is monitoring private phone calls, your children and my children's private phone calls, and tracking who their associates are. Right now, the U.S. government knows who he is calling, where she is calling from, and how long they are talking. When it comes to telephone calls, Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. The NSA is trying to create a database to get ahead of what I think is the, 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 a real growing threat. Homegrown terrorist cells are already here. It's to ferret this out before it happens. It's called protecting America. When it comes to keeping us safe in the war on terror, I think the president's program, President Obama's program, is the right one and it's a good one. His name is Edward Snowden. He's an American former CIA employee and computer technician. Today he came out as the leaker of classified NSA documents. You don't have to have done anything wrong. You simply have to eventually fall under suspicion from somebody, even by a wrong call. And then they can use the system to go back in time and scrutinize every decision you've ever made. Are you confident that you know everything that's going on within that agency and that you can say to the American people, it's all done the right way? Yes. Uh, I made the statement about that uh, the greatest threat to our uh, constitutional form of government since the Civil War is what's happening now in terms of spying in the United States. And that's the domestic spying program, Stellar Wind, that they started in secret and have been running in secret. Uh, so they're violating the constitutional rights of everyone. Uh, First Amendment rights that are violated because they, uh, you have the right under the First Amendment to have a free, free association. It doesn't say you have the right to free association as long as the government knows about it. That's, that's a direct violation of that one. The Fourth Amendment is clearly violated when they copy, they collect all the content data or they digitally record your phone calls. Um, and, and uh, violate all of your uh, privacy under the, your affairs. That's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. And then using the content of your emails against you in a court of law in secret, again, under the uh, law enforcement use of the NSA data, that's a violation of your Fifth Amendment rights not to testify against yourself. And then when they lie in courts and uh, don't, uh, don't tell you that, uh, give you the right to challenge discovery of the information they really used to arrest you, it's a violation of due process under the Sixth Amendment. So, I mean, they're just scrapping the entire constitutional form of government. This is the greatest threat to our democracy and republic and constitutional form of government since the Civil War. See, uh, unless, we, um, unless we stop the industrial accumulation of information on people, we're heading to a state of society where people will... See, the surveillance, just the fact that people are being surveilled uh, uh, inhibits their, their ability or feeling uh, that they have the opportunity to do uh, new and creative and innovative things. So that kind of reduces their risk taking basically, which in turn means you get no less and less creativity and innovation uh, and more and more stagnation of civilization. That's what happened in the Soviet Union, that's what happened in East Germany and the communist bloc. They stagnated because people were being so surveilled that they were afraid to do anything. 
it, it made people afraid to take a risk. And that's really the, the, that's really the point of capitalism. That's why it's been so successful, because it's, it was advocating people taking risks. Americans aren't supposed to sit back and, and let things happen and, and uh, let, uh, let government do what it does. We're supposed to be out there challenging. We have to be participating in our democracy and republic. We cannot sit by and let these things happen and be quiet. If we do, we're going to get this totalitarian state that we're sliding toward right now. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv.